Happy Halloween 2017. The prop that I built this year is called Creepy Crib. Over 200 pounds of welded steel. Hope you like it. There you go. I opted for a little bit of misdirection this year where you were looking at the baby and the sister and once you thought the prop was over then the monster came out from underneath the crib. For those that are interested the remainder of the video shows some behind the scenes and progress videos as I was building it. Happy Halloween everybody. So here's the early stages of Creepy Crib. I uh, welded together uh, a pretty large crib. Lots of space underneath. Uh, that's where the monster will eventually come out from. I uh, bought the baby online, 10 or 11 bucks, just a regular crying, kicking baby. I uh, rewired it so it could be uh, wired up to uh, 6 volt uh, DC but I can plug it in instead of having batteries and then uh, wired in a uh, pulse width modulator so I could uh, get the speed of the baby right. The gate is uh, riding on rails so it'll slide up and down have it drop down about uh, eight inches or so. Uh, somewhere in the middle I'm gonna have a uh, mobile playing some uh, creepy music and then uh, over on that side of the crib is where uh, the uh, sister will be and she'll somehow move across uh, the crib. Haven't quite figured out how to do that and uh, haven't figured out how I want to move the gate up and down uh, if I had a piston in the center of the gate, uh, which is where the equal weight is, I could probably lift it up with just one piston, but uh, that would get in the way of the monster coming out, so I'm probably going to have to go with two pistons, one on either side, because uh, if I do one on one side, I think the weight of it is going to jam it up trying to raise. So, uh, as I get further on, I'll uh, take some more videos. Alright, so I've been racking my brain trying to figure out how I was going to get the sister to move in the crib and I finally decided to put her on a uh, pivot arm. So I welded up a little stand to uh, support her and that's connected to this pivot arm right here and then the arm connects to a round cylinder inside some square brackets but the brackets allow the cylinder to move and thus the arm will pivot moving her from the back side to the front center of the crib as such I will uh, weld on probably a four inch arm right about here coming out and then attach it to probably an eight inch throw cylinder going out in that direction and when the cylinder comes out it will push the arm and move the sister up to the front of the crib. Should work pretty well. That's it. 
Another design issue I have has to do with the monster that's going to be jumping out from underneath the crib. Uh, in order to camouflage where the monster comes out, the baby gate will be dropping and covering up the holes where the monster is, so people won't see him as well. The monster head is about nine and a half inches, and so if I space the bars on the baby gate to nine and a half inches, which are the two bars on the right, it looks kind of silly. Uh, I'd like to space them more like the two bars on the left, which is about five and a half to six inches across, so it looks much better. So after about six different renditions on trying to make the bars expand in order for the head to be able to come out, I uh, opted to install them using bungee cords. It's actually surgical tubing, but uh, I put the surgical tubing up top and put the surgical tubing on the bottom. So now what look like solid bars actually can expand large enough for the head to come out. So the nine and a half inch head will slide right through the bars. Now bringing it back, the ears are too big, so I'm gonna have to pin those back. So that's not a big issue. But now the monster will pop right out through the bars. The ones that are on the uh, surgical tubing still will look solid like all of the other bars. And I'll end up uh, welding some more flat stock, maybe two inches across the top and the bottom in order to hide the surgical tubing. So all the bars will look exactly the same. That's it. When the prop is waiting to be activated, the static scene is going to be playing some creepy rockabye baby music. So I made a mobile that's going to be playing the music and uh, rotating around some uh, severed body parts and fingers and creepy things like that. Uh, the mobile is made out of solid steel and wrought iron. Probably weighs close to 15 pounds. The uh, lampshade portion is a repurposed food basket uh, that I got for Christmas last year. So thanks to whoever gave me that food basket. Inside, uh, the guts are a wiper motor and I fashioned together a bracket and put these arms uh, on there. The uh, wiper motor is probably a little more heavy duty than I need. But uh, that's what I had, so that's what I used. I positioned the mobile to not interfere with the sister when she moves across the crib. And I think that will work pretty well for me. I've got the crib gate bars temporarily installed. And as discussed in a prior video, the outside bars are solid and the inside bars are the ones on the bungee cords and they expand which will allow the monster head to squeeze through. But from a viewer standpoint they all look like they're solid bars. I think that's some pretty good camouflage and I'm happy with how they turned out. Just a quick uh, progress video. I've got the crib gate bars permanently installed. Most of them painted. Just have to paint the, uh, the expanding bars. That's approximately where the baby's going to go and the sister and the uh, mobile. And then I've temporarily set the back uh, bars on the uh, backboard of the crib. She's coming along, just waiting on freight props to deliver my valves and uh, cylinders and the controller. I just finished up the mechanics 
That's going to allow the monster to uh, reach through the bars from underneath the crib. Here's how it uh, will look from the front. I'll show you the back in a second, but uh, everything slides and will be hidden back under there. I'll probably put some cloth or spandex, something like that, to uh, hide the holes. I was going to use two pistons back here, uh, one piston to move the hands and one to move the head, but uh, I opted uh, for one piston, built a little bracket system to hold my piston, and then built a T-bracket that holds the head and the hands, and it allows the piston to move, and the head and the hands will move in unison. Like that. I think that's going to work out pretty well. So I ran into a bit of an engineering issue with the monster as he's reaching through the bars. The cylinder that I had, the throw rod, had a tendency to rotate clockwise as we're looking at it. And so the hands, the one on the right as you're looking at it, would drop low and the other hand would drop high and would get jammed up in the holes. It wouldn't hit the holes properly and wouldn't come through. So I had to figure out a way to keep that uh, throw rod from spinning when it would go in and out of the cylinder. So I welded on a guide rod and then created a little track right here that the guide rod goes through. So now, when the piston goes out, this guide rod keeps the hands from rotating and they go nice and straight through the holes that they're intended to go through. And then when it comes back, the guide rod keeps everything nice and straight coming back. So it starts off in a straight position and ends in a straight position. And I think that will solve my problem. Just finished the mechanics for the sister. She's on that uh, cylindrical tube that spins around in those brackets. I put a uh, five inch arm on the tube an eight inch throw cylinder and as the cylinder opens up it pushes that arm and swings the sister towards the front of the crib. It may look like I've taken a step backwards since the last video but uh, I removed all of the side panels so I could have uh, better access to uh, the inside and the outside. I've completed installing all of the cylinders. So we've got two cylinders for the gate. And I had to go with two because it's just so darn heavy and I couldn't get a center point to uh, Put a cylinder in because of all the other stuff there. So we got two for the gate. We've got one cylinder for the sister and we've got a cylinder for the head and the hands. If you've noticed on all of the cylinders this little block here that's a quick air exhaust and I wanted to put that on there because it allows the cylinder to move more rapidly than normal. If the air can exhaust at the cylinder instead of back through the tubing and at the valve, then a cylinder can be more violent. And I want all of these cylinders, uh, when they're pushing out, to be as uh, fast and as violent as possible. So, got all that installed. The last thing really is the air blaster, but that's kind of standalone, so I don't have to worry about uh, welding any brackets or anything like that.
So I was trying to figure out how I want uh, the air blaster to be plumbed and where I want the air to come out. And I decided to use this uh, cross member tube that I had already welded into place. So I welded on a little spout with a half inch uh, NPT connection. And I used some uh, epoxy glue just around where all the joints were, uh, just as a little extra something to fill up any pinholes or anything. I most likely didn't need the epoxy because the air is going to take the path of least resistance. So any pinholes or cracks or anything, some air might leak out there, but most of it is going to go in through here and out the end of that tube towards the front of the crib. And I drilled a uh, hole in the end. So that's where, you know, 95% of all the air is going to come out anyway. And that's probably going to be covered up with a crib sheet or something like that. So you're not even going to see that hole. Quick progress video. I've uh, completed the front bars on the gate. And I put the black screen uh, made of spandex, hiding where the monster is going to come out. Welded on the baby prop. I've uh, created my air blaster. And I've started to mount my valves and controller. So I've got a regulator for the valves and I've got a second regulator on the air blaster. That way I can tweak the valves and the air blaster independently. And uh, as you can see, the monster is hidden behind that spandex screen and it just pops uh, out through the spandex and then we'll come right back in again. So I think that's going to work uh, pretty well. Next I've got to plumb everything and uh, get everything all wired together and then program. All right, I think this will be my last progress video. Got the uh, mobile working, swinging around some severed fingers and a little spider. Got the creepy rockabye baby music going for the ambient sound. Finished up uh, all the wiring. It's kind of a mess right now, I'll tie everything up. I uh, used a flex line air hose for the air blaster. That made things uh, easier for me. And I uh, got the boot box flex max uh, from Fright Props. I uh, used that for my controller and I think I've got uh, the sequence down pretty good. So let's come out to the front here and I'll uh, show you what the uh, first draft looks like. Still need to make a few little tweaks with the sound. The gate sound didn't quite sync up with the gate actually coming down. A few other little minor issues, but uh, all in all, the uh, mechanics seem to be working well and I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, I lied. One more quick video. I thought you might like to see it from behind so you can see all of the pistons in action. Now that should be the last one. Happy Halloween.